Hey everyone, today we're going to do a fun little problem where we're going to remove all duplicates from an unsorted linked list. So let's go ahead and look at this example for the problem. So we have in this example this linked list 12321 and our resultant linked list is 123. And hopefully that makes sense. We had two was duplicated here and one was duplicated here and so we just remove those from our final list. And Let's get right into the problem and the first thing that we want to do is clarify the problem if we have any questions for our interviewer. So one question that we might have is how we should actually order the output. And the reason for this is that you don't, we don't really know which duplicate we're removing and it's relevant here because linked lists are an ordered data structure. And so possibly this would be used in some context where you'd be really wanting to preserve the order for some reason and therefore you know it might be relevant so in this case what i'm going to do is i'm going to say that we're going to take the first iteration of each uh value so when you first see the value all subsequent times the value shows up that those are going to be removed from our list and that's sort of what you can see that i did here and another question that i have is is it okay if I use extra storage? And this may not be a question that you really need to ask up front because it's not, it's sort of probably reasonable to assume that you can in this case because they didn't say anything about it. But it's a good thing to clarify because what we're gonna do is we're gonna, I'm gonna first go through the problem where we're using extra storage. And then I'm gonna go through it again and we're not gonna be allowed to use any extra storage. So that's gonna make it a little more tricky because we can't store off some set of all the, keys that we are all of the values that we found in the linked list thus far and then refer back to it so that'll be a, that'll change the problem but it's a good thing for us to clarify with our interviewer and the last thing i guess is just what sort of elements are in this linked list it doesn't really matter i'm just going to assume that they're integers in this case so let's go in let's get right into how we could actually solve this problem and the first iteration I'm going to do is assuming that we can have extra storage and this actually makes it a pretty easy problem right because all we know what we have to do is just iterate through the linked list store the values that we see in some sort of set and then as we view as we come across additional values we can just search whether it's in the set or not and if it's in the set then we just ignore that node or we skip over that node as we're traversing and we can skip over a node very easily by just saying that and that the previous node dot next is equal to the next node and so that's going to be very easy and let's just actually code it up real quick so we can just see what that's going to look like so we're going to have a public void and i'm going to do this I, it's going to be void in this case because I'm going to return, well, I'm not going to return anything. I'm just going to modify the list in place. So in this case, it's going to be void rather than returning a node, which would be the other option. And the reason, part of the reason why I'm doing this is that I know that the first node in my list is never going to be a duplicate. And so it doesn't matter. Like it might, it would make sense to return a node if there was a possibility of you removing the first node and then it might make more sense to do that from a logical standpoint although you know that doesn't really matter either because you could just set n to be a different node but in this case it doesn't really make a difference and i think it makes most sense to to not return anything and just modify it in place but that would actually be another good question for you to ask your interviewer so we're going to just call it dedupe and it's gonna take in a node n. And we should also quickly define what I forgot to do before is define our node class. So that's gonna be a private class node and that is going to have a int value or int val and a, it's a private int val and private node next. So just a very basic like node for a linked list. And then in this, we're going to, we want to create a set and I'm going to use a hash set. And then in that set, I'm going to add every node that I come across the value of every node to the hash set. And then I'm going to compare. And the reason why I'm not going to just add the node to the hash set, cause I could do, so I'm going to do a hash set of integers 
like this, but you could in theory do a hash set of nodes like this. But I'm not gonna do that because that could run into issues with the using the equals operation with the node classes because we're not actually overriding equals. So two nodes might be unequal even if they have the same value. And so I'm gonna compare the values and not the nodes themselves, which is a tricky little thing, but something to be aware of. And I'm just gonna call that nodes and I'm going to make a new hash set of nodes. Or sorry, of integers. <laughs> And then I'm going to keep track of what my previous node was because that's going to allow me to point to the, that's going to allow me to basically skip a node, right? Because I'm going to just be able to say prev.next is equal to n.next. So I'm going to use, I'm just going to iterate through this n. I'm going to say n equals n.next and so on and so forth and do a while loop until n is null. And then I'm going to have a prev node that's going to track the prior or previous node. And that is how I'm going to do this. So I'm just going to, and if that doesn't make sense, hopefully it will once we actually write out the code. So I'm going to have a node prev and that can just be equal to null for now because we aren't going to have to worry about it because we're going to, it's guaranteed to be set. And Actually, that brings me to a good point, which is that we should, before we do anything, check that node n is null. And if you forget to put this in, you could just mention it to your interviewer that you're going to assume that the node is non-null in this case because it might get messy to go back and add it into your code. And as long as they know that, as long as you acknowledge that that could be a possible case, then that should be fine. But it's better to just write it in if you can. So I'm just going to say if n equals null then return and that way i know i'm not going to run into any null pointer exceptions or anything so now we are going to say while n is not equal to null and then we're just going to iterate through we're, we're going to iterate through the list and we're going to add nodes we're going to add values to our set and we're going to skip over any nodes that are duplicated. So we can do that pretty simply. We just say if nodes.contains n.val. And this is where this is the case where the node is a duplicate. So if it is a duplicate, then we want to say that prev.next equals n.next. And that way we're just skipping the current node. Right, we're take we're changing because prev.next used to point to the current node, and we're saying just ax that and point to the next one instead. And then otherwise, we're going to add our node to the set, and then we're going to set prev to be our new n. And then outside of this, in both cases, we need to set uh, we need to set n to be the next node. So we're going to say that nodes.add n.val and then we're going to and remember we have to take the value and then we're going to say prev equals n and then finally the last part is that we have to say that n equals n.next and that's going to guarantee that we're going to eventually reach the end of our loop because if we didn't eventually reach the end of our loop that would be sort of a problem right so this is all there is to this code and hopefully this makes sense now the one thing that's a little tricky here is we're not actually checking that prev is non-null and the reason for that is that we know in all cases that prev is not going to be null when this is called and the reason for that is that when we first our first iteration through our set is going to be empty and so we're going to come down to here and set prev equal to n and so we're guaranteed that prev is going to be non-null and that's the one tricky little thing so i'm going to actually let you test this on your own time because i want to move on to the other part of the question but it, in your interview you definitely want to go through and actually test this code and make sure that it works the way that you expect it to so the second part now let's assume that we are going to implement this function again, but we're going to implement it without using any sort of extra storage, without putting our stuff into any sort of set. And the way that we're going to do this is going to be fairly similar, except that we're going to have to do two loops. So we can basically 
just go through this one at a time. So we start at this first node and then we have an inner loop that's going to go through all the remaining nodes. So it's going to go through two, three, two, and one and compare them to our first node. And if they are equal to our first node or equal to the value of our first node, then we're just going to skip it. And so it's basically going to be the same thing as we were doing before, except that now we have to have an inner loop and go through multiple times because we don't have any other way to check that the node has already is already existent in the list. So how are we going to do this exactly? We're going to create two loops. We're going to start, our code's going to start out fairly similar to the original code. We can just, we don't need to initialize anything now. So we're going to just have while n is not equal to null. And again, I'm going to assume, actually in this case, I don't even need to do anything because n, we're checking that n is not equal to null right here. So we don't even have to add a null check at the beginning. We don't even have to say if n equals null, then return because we're doing that right here. And so within this while loop, we're going to create another loop. And this is where the interesting part happens. So this while loop is going to iterate through all the nodes. And then our, we're going to create an inner while loop that's going to iterate all th through all the next nodes and update them accordingly. So I'm going to create a node cur, which is equal to n. And then I'm going to create another while loop. So in this case, I don't actually want to start with because cur is equal to n, I don't want to actually compare n to itself because that wouldn't really make any sense. And then we, you know, it would either break or we'd remove a node that we didn't intend to. So while cur dot next is not equal to null. And so we're going to use cur dot next rather than cur because we want to make sure that we're looking at a different, uh, the next node in the list. And so therefore we're going to say, we're basically doing the same thing as we were doing before. We're going to say if cur.next.val equals n.val, and this is where it gets a little different. We're going to, let me just fill in the rest of this loop boilerplate. So we know that we're going to have we can, well, actually, we'll get to that. So in this case, we're going to say cur.next equals cur.next.next. And so we're doing that rather than what we did before because it's going to make it, it's just going to make the code a little bit cleaner. So if I say cur.next equal, equals cur.next.next, then we know that cur.next, so cur.next is not going to be null because we checked that here. And cur.next.next .next might be null or it might not. But what we're going to do, what we're doing here is this is basically like setting cur to cur.next in the previous example because we're, we're comparing against cur.next. And it's also at the same time, it's updating our linked list to ignore. So by doing this, we are removing cur.next from the list. And then we're going to come through the next iteration of the loop and we're going to compare against cur.next again. So it's just a little bit simpler. And then otherwise, we're going to say cur equals cur.next, which is more similar to what we had before. So in this case, we're, the only difference between this and the code before, at least in this inner loop, is that we're saying that we're removing cur.next rather than removing cur by saying prev.next equals cur.next or prev.next equals n.next. And it's just a little bit simpler, but you know, you could do it either way and it really wouldn't matter too much. And then the final step that we have to take is that we have to say that n equals n.next. And so that is all there is to that code. And this code, let's actually go through and test it real quickly. And I'm going to do a slightly simpler version of this. I'm just going to do one, two, one. And so we're going to come through. So let's go ahead and do this. We're going to say n equals this first one and then cur equals one. So cur.next equals two. And so that's not null. And then cur.next.value is not equal to n.value. And so cur equals cur.next. So cur equals two. Cur.next equals is not equal to null because cur.next is equal to one. 
And so if cur.next.val equals n.val, so cur.next is now one and n is one, and so they are equal. So we say cur.next equals cur.next.next, which is null. So we're going to now come back through here and we get that cur.next, which we just set to cur.next.next is equal to null. And so all we have to do is come down here and we say now we, our final list is, or our list is now this because we removed that last element. And so we're just going to say that if cur.next is not equal to null, but in this case it is null. And so that was a really quick just run through of how you could test it. You could test some more examples. That would probably be a good thing to do. Last thing let's do is let's look at runtime real quick. And unfortunately I deleted the code for the other example, but we can just talk about it really quickly. The time complexity for that should be pretty obvious. We're just looping through everything once. And so the time complexity is going to be O of N. And the space complexity for that is also going to be O of N because we're creating a set that could store, if our linked list has all unique elements, it would store all N elements in the set. And so the space complexity would also be O of n. And in this case, it's a little more complicated. We get that our runtime, we could say that we have n iterations. So we're going to go through n times, and then we're going to each of those, we're going to go through n minus 1 times. So we're going to first say, we're basically going to have like n plus n minus 1 plus n minus 1 plus n minus 2 and all this sort of basically you can look at it however you want the gist of it is that we're going to get it's going to be o of n squared time and the reason for that is because we know that whenever we have you can just really you don't even have to do the math you can just say that because we have this nested loop here where each loop is going through all the elements in the list we know that that's going to be a quadratic time because we're going through n things and well we're going through uh n times n time we're going through n times n times basically and then space complexity so this is time and so obviously the time is not as good as the other version, but the advantage here comes in space because we're not actually storing anything other than this node and that is and n, I guess. So we are using a constant amount of space. And so the space complexity of this is O of one. And that is a reason why you might potentially choose this implementation over the other. So hopefully that all made sense. Uh, if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below or on the blog, and I look forward to seeing you guys again next week.